is Barry here from the Silver Reef. If you want to know how to go from all this rock to this guy right here, stay tuned for this video. This is how to create the ultimate aquascape for your reef tank. Enjoy the video, guys. What's going on, YouTube? This is Barry here from the Silver Reef. I wanted to give you a quick update on the aquascaping portion of my Planet Aquarium's 155 build. So I'm here today with my buddy Mark, um, and he's kind of showing me the ropes on how to do this thing. Uh, it's pretty. It's not extensive, but it takes a little bit of uh, forethought, some planning to make sure we get all the right materials, the right kind of rock, and then of course, kind of lay it out how you want to, how you envision your aquascape to be for your reef tank. So let me go through with the materials first, and we'll get to Mark on kind of the brief overview on how we're doing this, uh, creating this floating landscape. Okay, guys. So here's the material list. Um, I guess in order here, of course, you want to require some uh, some rock. In this case, I'm using Totaka rock that I've acquired from some local reefers here in OKC. Um, it's kind of hard to find nowadays, but when I saw it, definitely want to take advantage of that. Uh, secondly, of course, zip ties. So I don't have them pictured here, but you want fairly long zip ties. Uh, I use 14 inches and um, 10 inch zip ties just to, to do the rock. And then of course, pond foam. We did the black stuff here. And then I have some fiberglass resin, which will be stage, really stage three of the process after securing the rock together with um, zip ties and then securing it with pond foam. And of course you'll utilize some liquid hardener for your fiberglass resin as well. And as you have some cheap chip brush, one to two inches there, I got it from um, Harbor Freight in, uh, in the city here. And it's a little pale to, to pour the uh, fiberglass resin in. So that's kind of the material list that you'll need. So again, you'll need zip ties, rock, fiberglass resin, and then of course, lastly, to splash on to fill these black holes here, you'll want to use some aragonite sand um, or some any kind of sand really that's dry to throw on there to give it the natural look. And we'll kind of we'll kind of see it after we get it done on uh, from now until then. So let's uh, see what Mark has to say about the process here. Buddy Mark, and he's going to kind of give you a brief, brief overview on how we actually do this thing. So yeah, we've got we want to have porous rock really because we're going to feed the zip ties <clears throat> that Barrett mentioned. So the porous rock makes it easy. And if the rock's not porous enough, masonry bit always works. You have to be gentle so you don't shatter the rock. Um, but basically we put together different pieces with zip ties just to get the shape that we want. Fill it with pond foam, right? This stuff expands about, I don't know, half its volume, something like that. It's, uh, it's gonna be, it says it's water safe, but it's definitely gonna be water safe once we cover it with resin and then with sand, then again, again with resin and sand. So it really gives us the strength, right? I mean, this is literally just zip ties right now and pond foam. We haven't given it any rigidity with the resin, but you can really give it some shape. Um, once the pond foam hardens, you can actually, because it does kind of create like a blob, you can go in here and you can pull it out and you can give it kind of the look that you want. So you can get that live rock or that look to, to match your live rock. So when you cover it with the, the resin, you'll never see the black. It's just gonna look like to look like exactly what we have here. It's just going to be covered in sand, which one then will grow in with your coral and algae and all your other algae. So you'll never know the difference in the end. Nice. So, so on part of the steps, obviously we've done the zip tie portion. Now we've done the uh, pond foam. Yep. So how many layers of uh, fiberglass resin will we do? And then wh in what step of the fiberglass resin do we pour on the, the sand portion to make it the natural look? So really, it just depends on how well it covers. Um, it's going to be a little drippy, <laughs> of course. So we'll put on the resin, right? And then as the resin is still is still tacky, that's where we're gonna start throwing sand on it. We're gonna okay. have to roll it over, throw sand on it. You'll get <clears throat> fiberglass resin, resin drips that we're gonna have to take care of. That's what the chipping brushes are for, just to make sure we get that resin into every spot. And then we'll throw sand on it. Okay. We'll throw too much sand on it. And when it's done, we'll flip it over and all the excess sand that didn't stick yeah. is gonna come off. Cool. And then we'll just take, have to evaluate what we're looking at and <clears throat> see if there's still black showing from the pond foam or if we just need to maybe put another light coat or maybe we missed a spot so okay. it's just kind of a you know um check the progress as you go and redo it if you need to okay well thanks mark i appreciate that let's uh him and i'll get going on this thing we're gonna put some fiberglass resin on this today and with some sand and then i'll uh, show that progress here as we go along all right stand by guys thanks now uh, mark's gonna start applying some fiberglass resin we just mixed it with the hardener now we're just gonna lay it in there and then we'll let it set up for a second and then uh, throw some yeah, some of the ragonite on there. Yeah, this stuff is pretty, like, it flows very, very well. So we just wanna get enough in there so it gets down into the cracks and then so that the sand can just grab onto it. We'll probably do, like, the top and then we'll have to work, 
you know, flip it on the side. Yeah. So gravity can be, you know. It's not all falling off, yeah, dripping so, off. So this says we've got, I don't know, seven to 10 working minutes for this. So here pretty soon. And if you want to get really nasty, you can just start brushing it, you know, with the sand when you get okay. close to it, like kind of shove it in there, but then mm -hmm. you just end up with like a really messy brush. No, I'd yeah, rather uh, apply it after so, you got it coated. So yeah, literally you're gonna be throwing sand like every different way just to make sure that you get. So even when it's, if it's like, so if it's upside down, I'd say the bottom there in that branch, he's probably just gonna lift it, throw it up there and sprinkle it up and then until we turn it over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll just kind of make a mess with it, right? Okay. And then we'll evaluate things. And when we're kind of done with this coat and maybe it's set up a little more, we'll take a look and we'll just flip it over. Okay. And it'll probably have set up enough. We're not going to lose any of the sand. It's pretty sticky anyways. Okay. This stuff is nasty. I mean, well, I'll let you tell me when to start spraying some sand and we'll get that going. Yeah. We're going to probably just kind of work on this half and okay. work as fast as I can. And then we will, um, well, and we'll have some drips off the bottom, right? It's just going to happen. Yeah. So when we're done, we'll either just have to clip them off or if we want to kind of just, you know, let them dry and mess with them afterwards. Cool. And then you'll also like, these are cheap, just cheap little chipping brushes. They'll, They'll lose these little hairs every once in a while, so you might have to just cut them or pull them. Gotcha. You know, after the sand is all on there. Yeah, so Harbor Freight had those for uh, 55 cents for the one oh, inch and 64 go. cents for the the two inch, so you're not breaking the bank on this throwaway brushes there. No. And it's always nice to have an extra set of eyeballs, too. You're like, hey, dude, you missed, you know, you missed this spot or you missed that spot. Mm hmm. Sand going here, guys. Yeah, and like I was telling Barrett, like right now, we're going to try to cover everything, right? And you're like, oh, that looks just like a big flat. You know, it's not exciting. When you flip it over and get all that extra sand out of there, it's actually going to give you some depth. You know, we're, we're literally kind of grabbing some, kind of throwing it at it, or filling it up. Make sure that it, you know that it gets on there. Just kind of have some some fun with it. And it may take multiple coats, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll do two coats of this resin and then we'll have a, another coat of sand and then basically you'll cover, you won't see it all in that black crap. Exactly. Very nice. And you don't, I mean, you can touch it a little bit too if you need to, if you're like, I don't want to get a little bit of it up there. Massage it in there. It just makes your fingers really nasty and Barry doesn't have any gloves on, so yeah. he's not going to do that. Let's not do that. And then also I'm going to see like, oh man, I just missed that spot. I'll throw a little one there. So is there a way to, once we flip it over, conserve some of the sand in case someone's worried about wasting yeah. the whole bag? If we had, if we had went through and cleaned up all of our pond foam, okay, I usually yeah. Like when I built mine, I put it on some black uh, plastic trash bags. Okay, and you'll have all that sand. Yeah, and you can just put it back in your cuff and go again. Okay, of course it may have some resin in it at that time, so it gotcha. may not be as fine as it was, but it's still usable if someone's really worried about it. Okay. All right, guys. So here is coat one of night two of building. The floating aquascape here. So you can get in there, you can see where the sand is, put the resin down, sand on top. You still see a little bit black, but like any uh, coat of paint, you gotta do two coats to get it fully flush to cover any deficiencies or imperfections. Overall, it looks freaking awesome. A lot of that's excess sand, so you'll see a lot more definition once we dump that sand off of, uh, of the rock work but it looks outstanding. So we'll try again tomorrow night on coat number two. We should be all good to go. All right, night three for the ultimate aquascape for the Planet Aquarium's 155. So we have it pretty much 95 to 99% there. Um, as you can see, we've done another two or three layers of fiberglass resin plus the sand. Um, and it's covered up absolutely outstanding you see the definition of the different uh the acro pora uh break offs here you see it's all the definition of different bumps um there is a little bit of a black base but that's kind of natural look as well because you can see some of like a dark darker colors within the actual acropora structure here and here um so it doesn't give it to an off-putting uh, off-putting look so super excited about this piece it's about three feet wide of course the tank is four feet wide so it'll fit in there nicely because even I have gear braces on each side, about four inches a piece. And uh, so this should fit in very nicely. As far as how much it weighs, I'm not sure. It's probably right around 
oh, 80 pounds or so, if that. Um, I don't even know if it's, it's that much weight, but uh, we'll see because I'm gonna be manhandling it inside the tank. All right, YouTubers, here is the final product for the Planet Aquariums 155 Aquascape. Super excited how it turned out. It is absolutely my favorite Aquascape I've ever done. So much dimension in every component of the tank, of the display. Just a lot of depth. Obviously kind of an ornamental artistic piece with plenty of room for all sorts of Acropora species on the rocks. Plenty of great mounting points. It's a little cloudy in there due to uh, the turbo start working with the nitrifying bacteria, but uh, it'll clear up as I get the uh, UV on, as well as carbon work in here and the skimmer here in a few days. And no, I don't have these lights on running. I am cycling it. This is just for video demonstration, but here's an idea of it. We will do a full tank and equipment over, overview the next few days on this bad boy. Super excited, it's my favorite uh, build that I've done. I've done about six tanks now. This is by far my favorite. Hope you guys enjoy it. Have any questions, leave a comment. If you wanna see more videos, please subscribe uh, to The Seal Reef. Um, I do this for a side business as well, for consulting and uh, for equipment and uh, tank setups for reef tanks. So if you have any questions, guys, let me know. Appreciate all the love. Talk to you soon. Thanks.